Hi folks, my name is Erin McGough. I'm a filmmaker and career educator living in New York. And today we are talking about how to answer one of the most difficult job interview questions ever. What are your salary expectations? In this video, I'm going to cover one, why it is extremely important to answer this question a very certain way. Number two, new salary transparency laws that you need to know about. Three, what to do when you're asked this question on an online application, because that's important, those little pesky online applications. Number four, three things that you should absolutely not say. Number five, three example answers of things that you could say. And then lastly, I'm going to share with you one secret little psychological technique and tip that might just help you get paid a lot more. So you get to the end of the interview, in-person interview, phone screening call, remote interview, whatever it is, and they ask you those dreaded five words. What are your salary expectations? You know, this question is tricky because if you answer with too high of a number, they might write you off as being too expensive. But if you answer with too low of a number, you risk them lowballing you and not even being able to get up to the number that you really want to get paid, even with negotiation, which is just a waste of everyone's time. $12,000. Are you kidding me? That is insultingly low? When companies ask this question, it's because they want to know how much you think that you should be paid for this job. They're hoping that you say a low number or at least just like a number within their range. And if they weren't doing that, then they would just tell you the budget that they approved for that role in the first place. But I digress. So for those of you who are shopping around for a new job, okay, you don't need one ASAP, but you're just looking around to see what, what there is out there. It's best for you to be upfront about what you expect to be paid in this position. If for example, you're mid-career and you're like, I'm not gonna take anything for under $100,000, you should tell them that. Like you should be upfront because you have leverage. You don't need a job. You are just looking to explore your options. We are prepared to make you a very generous offer. And we are prepared to reject that offer. Michael, you haven't even heard. We'll never accept their first offer. Do market research, ask around, look at your budget, and then determine your value and what you think that you should be paid to be fairly compensated. Now, if you're in a position where you really, really need a new job, so maybe you're like a new grad, you're re-entering the workforce after a few years of having a gap, you're switching careers, you're unemployed, you just got laid off, you don't have as much leverage, AKA the ability to walk away. In that case, you really need to fight to have the company reveal their cards first. You need to try and get the company to tell you what their salary band or their salary range is. You need to avoid making the mistake of underpricing yourself because your salary is a snowball effect. So that's why, for example, it's so important to negotiate for salary because it can mean the difference of one to $1.5 million in lifetime earnings. And if you wanna learn more about that, go watch this episode of my show, No Knows What They're Doing, where we talk about that. It is truly fascinating. So we wanna make sure that you're fairly compensated. And that's what brings us to today, to these new salary transparency laws that we are seeing pop up all over the country. At the time of filming this video in early 2024, States like California, New York, Colorado, and many other states have adopted these new salary transparency laws, which are honestly unprecedented and really transformative. Companies in cities or states with these new salary transparency laws have to abide by certain rules. And in most cases, they have to provide the salary range in the job description. So if there's no more hiding behind this glass wall, they have to show you upfront how much they have budgeted for the position. And honestly, companies don't wanna do this because they don't want to be transparent about this. They wanna save money on you. They don't wanna overpay you. And that makes sense. You know, as a business owner, I totally get that. But what it should lead to is fair compensation. People understanding that if they go into an interview, they want to know what the company has budgeted. If you're curious, if you live in a city or state with these new salary transparency laws, I will put a few links down in the description so that you can look up the latest information regarding all of these laws. Honestly, this is really unprecedented and it's very, very exciting. Even as a business owner, I don't care because I compensate fairly. The only companies that are actually pissed about this are the ones that are compensating people fairly and now they're going to pay the price, literally. <laughs> okay, next up, we are going to talk about something that irks me to no end. And that is when they ask, what are your salary expectations on an online application? So you might find yourself in a situation where you're filling out the online application and there's a little box and it says like desired salary. And you're like, what the heck do I do with this box? Like, what, what do I do? So if you're filling out the application and they try to sneak this in there, if it is optional, leave it blank. Just don't write anything. Just leave it blank. However, what some companies will do is that they'll make it a mandatory field. You cannot submit your application unless you write something in the box. If you can write letters, write the word negotiable or flexible. Keep it vague. The, the key 
theme that you'll see here is just to keep things vague. Now, if it's worst case scenario and it's a mandatory box where they're not letting you write anything that's not a numerical value, then it gets a little tricky. Some people are like, write 0000 or 12345 or 9999. I would not recommend doing that because it's probably just gonna confuse the system with your application if it's filtering for people within a certain range. So I would recommend writing a large range with the bottom number being what you actually wanna make. So for example, if you wanna make $60,000, write 60,000 to like $90,000. And that way you're covering a large range, you're giving them what they want, and that's that. Also, companies that do this, can you stop? It's so annoying, just stop, thank you. Thanks in advance. Okay, so next we're gonna talk about some common mistakes I see people make when answering this question and they really shoot themselves in the foot because this, you just don't wanna do this, trust me. Okay, so the first thing is that the recruiter will say, what, so what are your, what's your desired salary? What are your salary expectations? And then the person will say, you know, well, I currently make $50,000 a year, so anything over that would be great. No, no. Please, no, 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 no! Don't do that. Don't do that. Never, ever, ever tell a company what you make or made in your previous role. It gives them way too much control and leverage over you. And in fact, in many states, it's illegal for companies to ask what you made in your previous position. Like, it's illegal because they use it to manipulate you. It's none of their business. Never tell them what you currently make, what you made in your last role. Just don't reveal that information. They don't need it. They're not entitled to it. The second mistake that I see some people make, and guys, if you make any of these mistakes, please don't beat yourself up about it. This is not intuitive. This is a skill that you have to learn. That's why I have this channel, is to teach you all these skills. The second mistake people make is that they'll say, oh, is this a part where I negotiate? Or they'll try to start negotiating, and guys, just don't. You can name your price, like if you have that leverage like I was talking about, but don't start to negotiate here. You can talk, you can have a conversation, but the hardball negotiating needs to come after the job offer. This is the moment where you get on the same page. Because for example, if all a company can afford to pay in this role is a max of $60,000 and you won't accept anything that's less than $80,000, it's a waste of time for both of y'all to continue with the process. The goal for this stage is just to see if you're like vaguely aligned, you know what I mean? And then after you sell them on you being the perfect package and they want you so bad to fit the role and you're just amazing, that's when you name your price. That's when you name PTO, 401k match, your salary, like whatever it is, that's when you can start to negotiate because you have the upper hand. And the last mistake that I see that's so, so common that people make is that they say, I'm hoping to make 90,000 or I'm hoping to make 40,000. Whatever it is, never say the word I'm hoping to or I'm looking to. You're not asking for charity. You are requiring that you are fairly compensated. So never say I'm hoping to or I'd really like to make this much. Just try to not name a specific number ever. And next I'm gonna tell you what you should do instead. Okay, so we just talked about things that you shouldn't say. So now let me give you some examples of things that you can say. Let's talk about how you can answer this question in the moment while respecting the interviewer and not creating tension or any weirdness, but also advocating for yourself and making sure that you are putting your best foot forward. So if they ask, what's your desired salary? What are your salary expectations? Here are some ways that you can respond. Thank you so much for asking. I definitely wanna make sure that we're aligned before moving forward. Do you have the salary band for this position? This answer is because you're aligning on a mutual goal here. Okay, this recruiter is just a person, okay? They're not personally paying you out of pocket. They're, they're not trying to screw you over or anything. They're just a person trying to get a deal done because they wanna look good to their boss. That's all it is. You both want to settle on a number that you both feel good about. Like it's a mutual goal. However, with this answer, you're still keeping it vague, you're keeping it positive, and you're putting the ball back in their court. You're saying, well, you're the one with the salary band. Why don't you start the conversation and tell me what you have budgeted for this role? Why am I the one throwing out a number first? That's so odd. <laughs> Remember, these are not personal relationships. Your job is transactional. They pay you to do a job and you do a job and they pay you. You just spent the entire interview explaining to them how you would do the job, how you would hold up your end of the bargain. Their end of the bargain is giving you money. So in my opinion, they need to hold up their side of the bargain and tell you how much they have budgeted. Another great example answer is this. I'm flexible in salary depending on other elements of the compensation package. Are you able to share the salary range for this position? Again, this answer is great because you are speaking their language. A job offer isn't just salary, like you have a compensation package. 
So you'll get like your PTO days, your sick days, paternity leave, 401k match, bonuses. Like there's so much more that goes into a compensation package usually. So you wanna let them know that you're flexible. Like if they have a great PTO policy or a hybrid policy, maybe you're willing to work for a little less. Let them know that you're willing to be flexible, but you're still asking them to show their cards first, which you'll see is a common theme. And lastly, here is another great example of how you can respond. While I am flexible, I am currently interviewing for positions that are in the 60 to $70,000 range. This answer is great if you know what you want. If you're like, I'm not doing anything for less than $60,000, it's great to just put it out there in the beginning. It's also a great answer because it reminds them that you are looking at options, that you're interviewing for positions, that you know how much you're worth, you've done your market research. This is not the best option for people who are like, you know, desperately seeking a job and like, you know, they don't really know how much they want to get paid. In that case, you do want to keep things more vague, like the first two answers. This answer is great if you have in-demand skills, you have some options, you're interviewing at other companies, and you really just want to be upfront with them. I'm not going to work for less than $60,000. This answer is really great for you. And also this is an answer that the recruiter will really appreciate because they literally just have a job to do and they have to write something down on their paper and they'll love you for this answer. <laughs> Whew, okay, that was, that was kind of a lot, y'all. That was a lot of money talk. You doing okay? I know this stuff is so exhausting. I know, I know. But you know what? You're gonna find a job where you're like, mm, this is good. This is a good job. I like this job, I'm getting paid well, I got my PTO, I got good coworkers. You're gonna find it, okay? Don't, don't give up hope. <laughs> okay, and finally, my last little tip here is a secret little technique that will make you more money in your life. And you don't have to just apply this to jobs, but to anything you ever have to negotiate, this is applicable. And that is embrace the awkward silence. No, for real. Like the more you can just have awkward conversations in your life, the more money you will make. Yeah. People don't like silence. They really don't like it. And they want to fill it up with talky, 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 especially people pleasers. You don't want to make other people uncomfortable. You talk talky, talky, they're all like, the nope, stop. Stop it. We are going to embrace pauses. Let the other person squirm just, just a little bit. Not be uncomfortable, just feel the moment. You know what I mean? Makes them feel uncomfortable, puts you in control. I am declining to speak first. So for example, if they say, what are your salary expectations? Instead of immediately jumping to, oh, well, yeah, I'm, I was thinking a little bit about that. You know, with my compensation, I've been doing my market research and I see the other video editors in this area with my skill set make, no, no, don't do that. Instead, we're going to take a breath. We're going to take a little pause there. And they're going to say, so what are your salary expectations for this role? You know, I'm looking to be fairly compensated, but I am flexible depending on other elements of the compensation package. Don't fill the silence. Just pause, just wait. I know it's gonna feel awkward. Practice with your family and friends. Try to not fill in the gaps and fill in the silence and say, oh, but, but you know, I could do a little less. I could, I could do a little less. Never bet against yourself. Do not negotiate against yourself. Tell them that you're flexible, keep it vague, be comfortable keeping it vague, be comfortable keeping it awkward. This will make you more money. Let them come to the conclusion themselves. I have a whole other video on salary negotiation where I dive way deeper into these psychological tactics. I'll link to it down in the description. But you know, you just wanna be relaxed and you wanna be okay with pauses. And you wanna smile and, and nod your head and show that you're actively listening, but you're not stressed because you're confident and you know who you are. And they'd be lucky to have you, you know? And you'd be lucky to work there. It seems like it'd be a great fit, but unfortunately you do need to be fairly compensated for your role and you'd really love to find a way to make that work. But seriously, I'm looking at you people pleasers out there. I was the same way for years. I still struggle with it, wanting to make other people feel comfortable, but you have to remember that this is transactional. They pay you to do a job, you do a job and they pay you. And remember, no one knows what they're doing, okay? Everyone's winging it. There are no rules. We're all adults playing pretend, okay? So you're not, you're not 
doing anything wrong by negotiating, okay? It's culturally very, very acceptable in the US. So you just wanna set yourself up for a good negotiation by answering this question correctly. All right, y'all, well, that's all I have for today. Uh, remember to watch my new show, No One Knows What They're Doing, and subscribe to it on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Please, please, please give it five stars. Leave a review if you enjoy it, if you have something to say. Throw guest recommendations my way. We also give advice at the end of every episode so you can fill out a form. I'll put it down in the description where you can send me your conundrum and we'll give you some advice. And as always, follow me on Instagram and TikTok. Remember, you got this, and I'll see you next time.